going over there on Unity 2023. So let's pick up where we left off by talking about Unity. We remember that Unity is a game engine. It drives the experience. So when we use Unity, we are using lots of different individual systems, the input system, the rendering system, and lots of other systems. We create things in Unity called game objects. Now, instead of every game object getting all the data from all the systems, we let game objects subscribe to particular systems. So they only get data that they request and nothing else. This subscription process is what we call components. So we create game objects, they have components, those components are subscribed to particular systems, and this allows things to run really fast because game objects are only getting the information they need and nothing else. So we saw that when we work in Unity, we create these game objects, they have components, components talk to systems, and we can add new components when we want to interact with other systems. When we're working with the editor, that whole process I just described happens as a kind of left to right flow. So when we're looking at things within Unity, we divide up a larger project into smaller parts called scenes. So right now we have sample scene right here as part of the hierarchy view. Within a scene are the game objects. We have three in our current scene, main camera, square, and circle. If I click on one of these, so main camera, and then we move left to right over here on the right hand side, we can look in the inspector view and its corresponding components. And again, those components are connected to systems. So what we saw in a previous video is the square game object right here in the hierarchy view, over here in the inspector view, we added a scripting component. A scripting component allows us to add code, the scripting part of that, to then interact with other systems. When we added a scripting component, something new happened. It created a new file to match that corresponding name we gave it. I gave it the name Square, and it also created a file called Square. And it created a file down here in the project view. Project view allows us to interact with files that are not directly part of the game object stuff of Unity. So if we need images, video, any other files we might need, they're part of the project view. So we can look at the files of the project. There's one last view we need to talk about, and that is the console view. So we have view into the console right here. Now, if you're new to programming, you've never done programming much before, or you're new to this series, you've probably not heard the word console before. It has a longer history connected to programming, but it's a place we put messages that help us debug code or help us log different things. In other words, if we want to send messages to ourselves, that is something a player would not see, messages to ourselves, checking to see if something's running correctly, if it has the right value, if things are working the way we think they should, we can send messages to ourselves and they appear in the console view. So debug messages and logging messages will appear as part of the console. So when we are playing things, we will see over here the game view, what the player would see, but as developers working with Unity, we can send messages to ourselves right here as part of the console view. And this can be really helpful to check things. Is this what we expect to see? Is this value in a certain range? And other things we will see. So let's go ahead and move back to the scene view and I'm gonna move back to the project view. So I'm about to double click on this file called square and notice the little hash symbol or the sharp symbol that's worked on it. This indicates it's a C sharp programming language file. So when I double click it, it's going to open Microsoft Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and do that. Double click, Microsoft Visual Studio is opening up for us. So the first time it opens up, it may take a second or two as it loads everything, and that's perfectly fine. And so here we are looking at C-sharp programming file. Now, if you're new to programming, if you've never seen any of this before, it can be a little overwhelming. There's lots of different names of things, there's different colors, there's different stuff going on. I'm gonna kind of ease us into thinking about two general concepts in programming more broadly. 
when we're talking about programming, we have instructions to the computer about things it should do. And then we have information to humans. The information to humans is what we call comments. We can add commentary to code or just simply called comments. Whenever we see things in green, that's information for people. The computer's going to ignore it. So this right here, line seven, is information for people and so is line 13. So line seven says, start is called before the first frame update and line 13 says, update is called once per frame. So this is information to us about how things work. Information from person to person, the computer's going to ignore it. Now, the next thing we'll pay attention to is lines eight through 11. So this says start and it's got an open and closing parentheses after it. Start is connected to a very particular system. The system it's connected to is called the initialization system. Remember, Unity's got lots of different systems, and we're going to start to know different systems by name as we move across this video series, but one of them is called initialization. Initialization system, as kind of its name implies, initializes things. It sets up a bunch of different values. It also allows us to set up our own values before anything starts going. Now, there's a word here called frame that appears on line 7 and also on line 13. So in terms of frames, we can think of unity as basically a kind of metaphorical train running in a circle. If you've ever seen a kind of setup of a model train system kind of running in a big old circle, we can think of it in terms of that. And so if we think of it in terms of a train ch -ch 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 -ch, kind of moving down the track and moving in a big old circle, just keep running in a circle over and over and over again until told to stop then we can think of the tracks or the spaces between the tracks as frames. So the train is running in a big old circle. And among that circle is divided up into little slices. These little slices or the tracks on which the train is running, we can think of as frames. So you may have heard the phrase 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second. This is describing how fast the game engine is running in that loop. So it's either running 60 times every time per, per track, per slice, or it's running 30 times. So 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second. Now, for every slice, for every frame, it has to run all of the systems that it needs to run every single frame. So one of the things it's going to do is set up a bunch of stuff ahead of time, the initialization system, for example, in Unity, and then it's going to run as a train and keep going around that loop and keep going around that loop and keep going around that loop and keep going around the loop until we tell it to stop. So we set up data ahead of time, part of the initialization system, by putting code in the start area of our C sharp file. If we want things to run every slice, every frame, we can put it in the update area. So the setup runs once, but update runs every time. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and add some code right here to line 10. And notice as I start to type, Visual Studio, the program I'm using to edit code, is going to try to anticipate what I want to do. Now, it doesn't always get it right, but it gets it right most of the time. So, I started typing the word debug with a capital D, and it says, oh, do you mean a class containing methods to ease debugging while developing a game? And I do. So, I'm going to press enter or return, depending on what keyboard you have. And then I'm going to press a period, and then an L. And then notice it goes, oh, do you mean logs a message to the Unity console? And I do. So I'm going to type it out. And I'm going to type open and closing parentheses and then a semicolon. So the C sharp programming language is among a family of languages who every time we type a single instruction, a single line of code, it ends in a semicolon. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to give information to something called log. Now, if you're coming to programming for the first time, this might seem a little bit confusing. What, what is he doing here? Remember that larger programs are often broken up into smaller parts. 
we often call their smaller parts functions or sometimes methods. So what this means is we have a large program broken up into a bunch of smaller programs, and this allows us to more easily test parts. So we can test, does this thing work? Does this thing work by sending an in information and getting information back out? So kind of mini programs within a larger program. So log here is a mini program as part of a collection of different other mini programs called debug. We call these within certain programming languages classes. And the word class comes from a shortening of the word classification. So we have a classification of things, or in other words, a collection of values together. So if a classification is trying to communicate to another classification, we describe this relationship by how they communicate, or put another way, in programming terms, it's methods. By what method does it communicate? So we have classes, collections of values, talking to other classes, collections of values, and we call the things they communicate back and forth called methods. So these are also called functions in other languages, and these are just mini programs. Don't get too confused by the terms. I'm just talking about mini programs that are part of collections of values. So it's telling me currently on line 10, it's got a little red squiggly angry line, and it's telling me I need to give it some type of particular information because it expects to receive some information as part of its open and closing parentheses. It's how we give information, give data to a mini program, and then we get something out or it runs something as a result. So I'm gonna type rotation marks, and I'm gonna type hello right here. So notice the little red squiggly disappeared. Now, before I do anything else, if this is just the code I wanna write, I need to make sure I save this. So I'm gonna go up here to File, and then I'm gonna go down to Save All right here. I could alternatively just go Save, so Control S, I'm currently on Windows, or I'm just gonna to go to Save All, because we just have one file open. If we have a bunch of files open, potentially we could save them all at the same time. So the Start section of code right here, lines eight through 11, is going to run as part of the initialization system within Unity, it runs once before that train keeps going in that loop, right? Before the frames start running. So if I go back to Unity, and of course making sure everything is saved, go back to Unity, it's gonna pop up a little message that's telling me it's reloading. Okay, and now it's ready to go. So in case you ever write code in the future and you come back to Unity and you're like, oh, is it ready or not? Look for that message disappearing. The reason why that message pops up every time is because we can also write code that might change how Unity works. And so Unity ne needs to make sure anytime you change code that are that's currently within the current project, it needs to double check it understands everything. So it checked over the code and that was what that little message meant. So we are finally ready to run our first code as part of a Unity project. So what we're looking for is we're looking for information within the console view that will be generated as part of the start chunk of code that we just wrote. We just wrote a single line of code and it says hello and it's going to run because that start chunk of code is associated with the initialization system that runs as part of the systems within Unity. So how do we even ever see that message? Well, we're gonna move over to the console view first because that's where the message is going to appear. And then right here at the top kind of part of the screen is three buttons right here. First of which we can play the current scene, we can pause the current scene if it's currently playing, and then potentially we can step through line by line of code. We're not really gonna use the third one for a while. We're mostly gonna pay attention to these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and click play. It's gonna load everything. And then it's gonna show us what the player would see, which is these things arranged right here, which we saw over here in the scene view. They're arranged within the main camera, and this is what the player would see. What we see as developers, as part of the console view, is a message right here that says hello, right? From debug log, it's telling us where it came from. Unity engine, debug log right here, hello, message. Fantastic. We saw the exact message, rewrote it. We are interacting with a system as part of Unity. So I'm gonna go ahead and click stop right here, and we're gonna stop this. Now, 
I'm about to add more messages. So in case I ever want to add more messages, I'm going to go ahead and click clear right here and make this just fresh so we can see it running. I'm going to move back to my code right here. And now I'm going to come down to update. So remember, the start chunk of code only runs one time. Unity runs all of the start stuff all at once, one after another, after another, until they're done. And then it starts the train. Ch -ch 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 running on a per frame basis, either 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second. And it runs all of those systems. Among those is something that looks for update. So anything in update will be run every frame, every slice, every part of that track. As the train is going around in a circle, every fry, every slice, every frame. So I'm going to go ahead and start typing debug. And then I want log. And then I'm going to do something I don't recommend people do, but it's important for us to understand how this works. I'm going to write something that's going to give us a message called looping. So we're going to say hello one time, and then we're going to see a whole bunch of messages of looping because it's going to run for every slice in that track for every frame. Anytime update is that chunk of code is being run and it will be run once per frame. So keep in mind, like, you know, 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, every frame is going to be run many, many, many times very quickly. So just to double check, of course, let's make sure we save. Now, if we're ever unsure if we're saving a file, look for this little asterisk at the end of the file. If you see it, it means it's not saved. So let's go ahead and file save right here. And now it's saved and look, the little dot disappeared. So we're saved. Okay, come back to Unity. And come back in Unity, it's gonna reload things as it did. And okay, it's ready to go. So. What we want to do is we're going to run this current scene. It's going to then check its game objects, check their components. If it sees any scripting components, it's then as part of the initialization system, run any start chunks. And then as part of the update system, corresponding name, run all of the corresponding update stuff. So let's come over here to console view and then let's click play. Oh, look. Looping, 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 looping. And I'm going to go ahead and stop it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and point this at right here. It ran over 999 plus times, which makes a lot of sense. Remember, it runs once per frame and it's set to 60 frames per second. And so it ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. In fact, if I scroll all the way up to the top, we will see the very first hello right here, right? So start ran first allows us to set things up and then looping ran as part of update every single frame, 60 frames per second, many, many, many times as I let it run several seconds in a row, many, many, many times. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click clear and let's get rid of all those messages. So let's review what I've talked about in this video. We understand that Unity is a game engine, it drives things, it has game objects. Those game objects get data from various systems via their components. We create a game object, it has components. Those components are subscribed to particular systems. One of the components we can create is something called a scripting component. This allows us to write code, hence its name, the kind of scripting component. When we create a new scripting component or we use existing scripting components, we can work with files as part of the project view. So I double clicked square right here with the little hash or the sharp symbol. This opened it up in Visual Studio. And then we talked about the start chunk of code and the update chunk of code, the start method and update method. And we think of methods and functions as just being many programs as part of larger programs. They have input and potential output. So we saw if we write anything in the start area, it's just going to be run once as part of the initialization system. But if we write anything in the update area, it's going to be run every time. I describe the metaphor of a train running in a big circle. And so the tracks that it runs on as kind of divisions or slices are the frames. Sometimes we use the phrase 60 frames per second. And so every frame different systems are being run in a very specific order, one of which is connected to update. 
And so whenever we put an update every single time for the current scene, it's checking all its game objects from those game objects. It's shifting its scripting components from those scripting components. It's checking update and then running any code there. So we saw if we want to set things up, we want start, we want things to run every frame, we want to update. And so we noticed how we can tie in to subscribe to particular systems. As we expand this in future videos, this will be very important because we, be able, we will be able to get data from sister components. Remember, this is a scripting component. Get data from sister components, check that data. If it's particularly within range, if we've received input and a number of other things, then act on that data to do something between frames. We will set things up and then the next frame it will be drawn. And this idea of things happening in a very specific order will be important to us in a future video. But we've covered quite a lot of things in this video, most of which was review to get us used to the idea, creating a scripting component, opening up a C sharp file, looking at it in Visual Studio, and then under starting to understand how parts of it connect to how Unity works and how the idea of game objects components and systems are all tied together. And by knowing how these concepts work and how they relate to each other, we can start to understand how we can create games and other interactive projects within Unity 2023. Thanks for watching.